Hi, this is James Lansman with EnviroSight. Today I'm going to show you how to re-terminate the cable on your Rover X video inspection system. Cable re-termination is a fact of life for any robotic crawler system. But since the Rover X uses advanced digital communication technology, it only has six conductors running through the cable. This makes the termination simple for anybody to, to perform the, the termination in the field instead of enduring weeks of downtime while having to ship the system out to have it repaired. The brunt of the damage you'll usually find on your cable happens within the first three feet. Um, basically, you'll end up with nicks into the jacketing, um, which you can see here. Basically, any nick like this that goes through the jacketing and you can see the inner Kevlar in the wires needs to be cut back and re-terminated. If the nick is deeper and it actually severs either a video connection or a CAN communication line, the crawler will either become unresponsive or you'll lose your video signal. If that happens again, look for the damage and cut back to that point. Right. For doing a row rex retermination, we need a few basic hand tools. I'll start from the left, work my way to the right. Um, first, you'll make sure you have your epoxy for doing the termination. We use a lock tape brand, and it's a 00CL part number. Basically, it's a five minute with a two ton carrying strength epoxy. Anything equivalent to that would work. You need a basic pair of wire cutters. These are basically used to cut the wire back to the proper length. You'll need a exacto blade to strip back the jacketing on the cable. You'll need a pair of wire strippers to strip the, the jacking on the wires so you can solder them into the cups. And I like to use dental pick to help separate the Kevlar. It makes it a little easier. Um, for the side iron, I use a Weller WES51 model. Uh, Base it's a variable temp iron, which lets you adjust the temperature. That way you don't melt the wires. You usually want to have it around 750 to 800 degrees, somewhere in that range. Solder is uh, basically a 0 0.020 diameter rosin core solder. Uh, works the best. It's small diameter, melts fast, so you don't overheat the conductors. You'll need your new termination. Basically, it depends on what you're doing. You might need to replace the entire piece, or you can just replace the solder portion itself. Um, it all depends on what the connector you have looks like. And I also like to use a dummy plug for doing the termination. This helps you actually lock onto the connector and actually screw it in tight once you're done. First step for doing the retermination is to inspect your new piece. If you're replacing the entire connector, separate all the components to make sure everything is there. First you'll have your protection tube. There's an old style protection tube as well, which is still available. Um, as you can see here, there's a difference in the diameter and the material construction. So one's a little more heavy duty than the other one. They both work, either one, whichever one you have. Um, make sure the rubber grommets in the end. Without this, it will not seal to the cable, and you'll be able to get water into the connection. Um, this is where your dummy plug comes in handy. Basically, lock that on the connector. You can unscrew your back shell. Back shell will come off. You have your back shell. You'll have your solder cup for your strain relief. Your bayonet ring, and then you'll have your actual termination piece here. This actually pushes apart. You push on the front. Everything comes out the back. You have your wire separator, and then you have your cups where their wires are actually soldered to. So once you're sure you have all your pieces, you're ready to start. Once you have identified that you have all the pieces you need to do the termination, first thing you want to do is actually slide them onto the cable. The last thing you want to do is do the termination and not be able to actually slide them onto the cable. So you do your tailpiece first, then your back shell and then your bayonet collar, and last piece would be your strain relief cup. So once they're all in the cable, you're ready to start the termination process. First step is to take your exacto blade, and you want to strip off about inch and a half to two inches of jacketing. So basically if you fold the cable, and slowly run the exacto blade around it. It'll actually cut the jacketing. You won't have to exert a lot of force, and you won't damage the inner conductors. Once you have it cut all the way around, you want to make one small cut lengthwise. This will enable you to actually separate the jacketing and remove it. Now you have a Kevlar. Basically, take your dental pick, 
And if you just pick at the Kevlar, you'll be able to separate it. It's one of the easiest ways to do it. It's a little tedious. But you, want to, you don't want to just cut it off at the base. You actually want this to be embedded in the epoxy once you get to the stern wave cup. That way you'll have all the strength of the Kevlar. So basically once you have your Kevlar separated, you could go ahead and cut it down to a quarter inch, which is just enough to be inside the cup. You don't need any extra. Next stage is to cut these, this, uh, it's like a rubber jacketing that encases the wires. This is a little tricky. You want to take your time. You don't want to push too hard because you will actually cut the wires on the inside of it. Once you get it started, you usually just pull it, and it'll pull right off. And that piece you're removing. You don't need that. That's extra. Once inside, you'll start to see like the filler strands of string. These, usually I cut them right down to the same length as Kevlar. They all get embedded in the epoxy, just all extra string relief. Purple and black wire, they're both your power wires. That's why they're larger diameter. So that bundle over here. If you grab the white and brown wire and actually pull it sideways, you'll be able to shrink back this Teflon wrap that's around it. And you'll expose two clear filler wires that are in there for filler cables. Those two, once you have them separated, you can just cut them off. They're not needed. Again, you can leave them a quarter inch. They'll just be embedded in the epoxy, just extra strain relief. White and brown, that's both your can communication wires. And you want to do the same thing with the other bundle over here, which is your green and yellow, which are your video wires. Pull them. And then grab this other filler. And cut it off at about a quarter inch. So at this stage, all six wires are exposed. Um, if done correctly, there won't be any damage to the jacketing, as you can see here. And you're ready for the next stage. So next stage, you want to slide your epoxy cup up. And that's where the wire separator comes in. Basically, this you put over the wires, run the wires through it, so they stay in the right order once the epoxy is dried. And if you're not sure what order they go into, you can actually look at the connector itself. On the connector itself, it's actually small abbreviations for each wire color. So with the top dead center notch, that'd be your top dead center. That's where your purple would be. Dead center bottom is your black. And then the top two are your can communication wires. Your brown and your white. So your brown would be on the right. Next to the purple. The white one would be on the left. And then below that, you would have the green, below the white. And your yellow would be below the brown. Now your wire is in the right orientation for doing the termination once the epoxy is set up. So you'll slide the, your, your epoxy cup up, and basically this is your strain relief cup. So you want enough, the cup is, it's probably about a half inch long. So essentially you want to split that in half with jacketing. So you have a quarter inch of jacketing and a quarter inch of your Kevlar that you left there. this stage you grab your epoxy gun and now you fill the cup with epoxy and we use the self mixing nozzles so you don't have to worry about mixing it you get the proper mix every time so you know it's going to set up properly and basically you just fill the cup up to the top
at this stage, now you wait five minutes for the epoxy to set up, and then you can start the next stage. All right, after about five minutes, the epoxy should be set up. If you can still move it a little bit, that's fine. It's gonna hold the wires in place. For this epoxy, it takes 45 minutes for it to be 75% cure and 24 hours for 100% cure. So, but at this stage, you can do the retermination within an hour. You could actually technically work in the field without having any problems. So, next step is to take your solder cup. Basically, it has a notch into it where it goes into the crawler. Basically, you want that at the 12 o'clock position when you lock it into your vise. And for doing this termination, I like to start at the bottom, work my way up, just because it's easier and you're not overlapping wires. So dead center bottom is going to be the black wire. And as you can see, I stripped back eh, about two inches when I started out. So at this stage, I like to keep my wires short. So I'll probably trim off about another quarter inch, just to keep it short. Makes everything look that much neater. All right, so basically that's what I'm gonna work with. So I'll start with the black wire. And I'll strip back just enough to fit inside the cup. I don't want the extra. Just like that. Give this a step. I'll switch this out real quick. So basically, you want to tin the wire after you strip it. And by doing that, you're basically holding your iron underneath the wire. Let it heat up and then touch the top of the wire with the solder. And you'll see the solder melt and coat the wire. Once it's shiny like that, coated with solder, you're good to go. That's why we're soldering into the cup. You want to do the exact same thing to the cup itself. When they come new, they're empty, there's no solder into them. So you want to fill the cup with solder um, just for the known fact that solder flows better solder to solder, and that way you'll get a secure connection. So it's the same process, hold the iron on the outside of the cup, give it a few seconds to heat up, and then you can slowly fill the cup with solder. And you actually do that to all the other cups you're gonna use, which is all of them. Once your cups are all filled, now you can go ahead and solder your black wire in. Basically hold the iron on top of the cup, watch until you see the solder melt, and slowly insert the wire. Once it's fully inserted, remove the iron, give it a few seconds to cool down, do the standard tug test to make sure it doesn't pull out. Now you know the solder's or the wire is secured, and you're ready to go to the next wire. At this stage, I'm gonna jump to the green wire, and repeat the process. I'll strip back just enough to fit inside the cup. Tin it. And then same process. I'll line it up, iron on top of the cup, heat it up so it melts, and then I'll press the wire into it. Done. And now I'll do the yellow wire. Okay. Wires do get a little hot, but if you can do it this way without using a pair of pliers in the wires, it's a lot safer. Mainly due to the fact that the heat will actually transfer to the pliers you're holding the wire with, and it will melt the jacking back and damage it, so you might have to start over. So if you just push it with your fingers, it would be much better off. At this stage, the all the wires are soldered to the cups. So that portion is done. 
So then you can actually slide it into the front piece. And basically you just want to line up the, the notch. Got to be a little tricky. have it in all the way, it'll actually lock, you'll hear the clip lock, and you won't be able to pull it back out. That portion's done. Then you can slide up your collar, put that on top of the top. And what I do here is you have a pretty good amount of wire stuck between there. Last thing you want to do is let it come off the side and get pinched. So I'll actually twist it up like this, and I'll push it forward, and I'll make sure it actually goes inside the front connector. So basically, my strain relief will actually be like that. All the wires are hidden. Kind of hold it, support it, slide up the back shell, screw the back shell down completely, grab your dummy plug so you can hold the front piece. Don't use a pair of pliers, you'll just crush it and damage it. And now you can screw your back shell down completely. Give a tug back. Now you're here to straight away hit the back shell, which is what you want. And now you can slide up your rubber tailpiece and screw that in. Well, there you go. All right. Once your termination is done to this stage, you can do further detailed testing with an ohmmeter. Um, by doing that, basically you will ohm from this end of the cable to the inside connector to make sure all your connections are going through and make sure none of the connections are shorted together. You will get a short between your can lines because there's a 120 ohm resistor in this connector. That is normal. But make sure none of your power lines are shorted to either your can or your video lines. If they are, there's a short, do not plug in the system in and power it up or you will burn out boards. Thank you for taking time to learn how to re-terminate your Rogue Rex crawler cable. If you have any questions about the procedure, please contact us at Envirosite Service Department or reach out to our nearest Envirosite Authorized Regional Service Center.